Hey, well, welcome back to the Life Wide Open podcast. We've been traveling for two weeks. We're finally back home. It feels good. We got a special guest on today, a fellow Midwest creator, Miles Montplaisier, a.k.a. the You Betcha Guy. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Uh, We've run into each other a few times, and I think it was good that we got together finally you know i think our audiences are a little bit different exactly but the midwest is the midwest so i think it works i got a funny story about that so every time i you know i'm sure you have conversations like this someone will ask me what do you do for a living i'm "I'm a youtuber and they'll go oh really you ever you ever heard of the the you betcha guy and i'm like yeah yeah of course they're like Nice. Yeah, you should see if you can do something with him. <laughs> He's so like, funny. More times than I can count. Yeah, but well, yeah. we're here. We're finally I doing it. I know, we're finally together. doing it. So when people come up to you, being that we're both from the Midwest, and, and they go, what do you do for a living? How do you explain that you make videos for the internet? Yeah, so I've kind of now just resorted to saying that I run a media company mm-hmm. and kind of roll with it that way. But at first it was like... When you're trying to explain now, like most of the time people have seen the videos, at least have an idea. But I remember when I told my parents that I was going to do this and they're like, yeah, but this like isn't a job. Like, what are you going to, how are you going to pay the bills? You know, (laughs) luckily we've kind of gotten to the point where being a YouTuber and, and being, uh, Posting videos online is like much more of like an acceptable exactly. job. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah. it makes it easier to just be like, yeah, we just create content online. So, yeah. Yeah. And how would you describe what you do? Are you a comedian? Are you a skit maker? Like, what would you say? Yeah, it's it's a very loaded question. <laughs> um, I'm definitely not a comedian. Uh, my buddy Charlie Barons, he's he's a true comedian. <laughs> Um, if yeah, you, the guy's if you, hilarious. Yeah, if you don't know him, he's, he does similar stuff to us, but he also is a stand-up guy and he travels around and does tours and stuff. And when he was in Fargo, I did a hot five is what they call that of going up and doing five minutes of your own little stand-up jokes and stuff. And, you know, I, it was all right. People were kind of already wanting to laugh because they've seen my videos before. So it's not like a cold audience, but after I was done, I was like, yeah, I don't think I want to do this. So you didn't want to do stand-up. No, I don't do any stand up at all. Um, I also like the business stuff more than probably other people who create content. And if you're on the road for ten weeks, you're right. not going to be able to run a very good business behind the scenes. So, no, it's true. Um, back to the original question of what I, I I would just say I'm a content creator. Yeah. That's that's it, boil it down to that because we do podcasts, we do videos. Um, you know, we've dabbled in blogs and stuff before, right. but that's just... Dude, you yeah. guys are, you're building an empire. We've been watching for, I mean, at least two years now. And I mean, we're big fans. We we love what you're doing. Yeah, I appreciate um, it. But yeah, you guys are just, you're killing it. The goal now is kind of what's, is to make it so it's a little bit bigger than just me. Right. Because it's like, I always tell Ryan... He's sitting over there, the T-shirt guy. He's kind of your right-hand man. Yeah, isn't he? he's yeah. been there since the beginning. Um, but it's like if I get hit by a bus tomorrow, like eh, our business is kind of done, right? It, you know, or like what you guys have is, you know, is more than just one person and all that. And I think that's one thing that I'm trying to do is make it into more than like, having other creators underneath us and yeah, stuff like that. That's kind of what I noticed. You're almost like like a bar stool in a way you have all these subdivisions of, of different shows and just different things you're doing. Like, yeah, I think the bar stool is interesting because they kind of blaze the trail for content creators and that it doesn't have to just be, you know, you're by yourself doing your own thing. It can be a group of people. And I right. think that they've done a good job with that. And their model is definitely, it's interesting because they have a lot of uh, creators that they're paying that aren't necessarily bringing the company money. Right. Um, and the kind of the top people are supporting the rest of the company. And so it's kind of a interesting business model, but yeah. So is that something that you want to do is continue to bring on different creators? Are you, are you trying to find them at like the ground level or would you rather pick up a creator that's already like established? Yeah, I don't know. We've kind of done both now. Um, I think what really matters more is kind of the, the jockey on the horse rather than kind of where they're at, you know, (laughs) Mm -hmm. there's one gal that works that does content with us that she submitted. We'd had like a little contest she submitted and we're like, she's not going to win this, but there's just something about how she's presenting herself. Like she's not the funniest person in the room, 
but she like you can clearly understand she knows how to like put out content that's mm-hmm. like creates conversation and mm-hmm. relatability. She gets it. Yeah, so it's kind of like you have to kind of weigh in all that different stuff. Like you don't just have to be the funniest person in the room right. or anything like that to create really good content. Um, Ryan Cheely knows that pretty well. He doesn't have to be. <laughs> he's, not, he's not very funny, but uh, he he gets views on the internet, right, Ryan? <laughs> uh, you you have your accountant on one, don't you? Yeah, so we we got basically we started a business podcast, not necessarily because I'm like the most qualified. It's just something that I like to do. Right, you're gonna have those conversations. <laughs> That's like our anyway. life, yeah, dude. yeah, yeah. It's not we qualified, do. but we like doing it. <laughs> yeah, it's like well, I found that if you just uh, exclaim on the internet enough times, people just think you're an expert, like. <laughs> I uh, just decided that I was going to be a ranch dressing expert, you know? I saw that. And we did a series for a while. We actually had two, like, stints doing it. Of It was called the Ranch Wrangler. <laughs> and you just, like, say that you know what good ranch is, and you post enough posts about it, and all of a sudden you... You people, think somebody's going to question you? Yeah, this guy doesn't yeah. know his ranch. This guy yeah. knows his way around a bottle Well, that's what you got to be nervous about is, like, there's actually maybe a guy who's actually a <laughs> ranch connoisseur who calls you out. Now you got like internet a, beef? Yeah, blind taste tests, you know? Because <laughs> I was notoriously hating on Hidden Valley Ranch because I just don't think it's that really? good. Yeah, I'd rather have like a homemade. Well, what's funny is there's a lot of homemade ranches that are made from the Hidden Valley packet, like the powder. Right. So it's kind of whatever. But the actual <laughs> stuff that comes out of the bottle, I'm not necessarily a big fan of. And and that was like people are like, well, put that up against another one and see which one you like, blind taste tests and so yeah, you're like weird, it's just ranch. Yeah, it's a weird, it's a weird life I live. It's baiting ranch with uh, keyboard warriors on the internet, but yeah. So you're mostly Facebook, and I would say Facebook is notorious for keyboard, yeah. keyboard warriors, right? So we definitely came up on Facebook. We kind of hit it the timing right where Facebook wanted to compete with YouTube on their long form right. content. Um, so they were kind of pushing long form stuff and we kind of hit it at the right time where they were doing that. And then they also started monetization like YouTube does. And so we, we built an audience there. We kind of tailored our content to be shareable and Mm -hmm. you know, tagging friends and stuff like that. And so that's kind of our audience grew the fastest. Um, and then on top of that, we just been trying to slowly grow all the other ones. Mm -hmm. And TikTok has been one that, um, was fun to try and figure out and yeah it was kind of like the race to a million followers on there it's you know? it's so interesting because i mean when you so we'll repurpose like a youtube video for facebook and in order to make it like pop which we still haven't mastered by any <laughs> means uh it, it has to be completely recut and you know tailored for yeah. the facebook viewer whereas like a facebook video you know, I mean, I guess it, it could work on YouTube, but for us, it, it wouldn't necessarily I be I imagine ideal. it's probably got to be cut a little tighter, right? Yeah, like it's exactly. Move a little bit faster just because... You have to get the point off right away. Yeah, whereas, like, I feel like on YouTube, you click on a video and you're like, you're committed, I'll give this at least a couple minutes. Right. That I'll watch it, whereas on Facebook, you have, like, 10 seconds. You're just or I'm scrolling, just maybe, going. Yeah. yeah. Do you mind going back and kind of just telling us what, what all sparked this? Like, how'd you, how'd you get into this? Were you making videos for a long time, or did this... Yeah, like, so... What's the story? I, once I started doing this, I kind of like thought back to like, you know, was there any like, was I doing videos before and growing up? It wasn't like a passion of mine or anything, but I do remember me and my younger brother would take the family video camera and we made our own parody sports center. <laughs> so it was like, you know, and, and I was like the buttoned up guy who was like trying to keep it serious. And he was like, he's wearing like a Kobe Bryant jersey underneath a blazer. And it was just <laughs> like, you know. Probably was not funny to anyone but us, but like that's kind of I would say like where it all started is just messing around with the family video camera after college. So, well, one I went to college, so my dad owns a, a concrete construction business, um, and I don't know if you guys have ever worked concrete before, but oh, you don't want to work concrete. <laughs> <It's> tough work, <laughs> yes. My dad always joked. He said that I made you work concrete growing up so that you would go get a college degree. Um, and wouldn't have to work concrete the rest of your life. Not that that's, it's just really tough work and it wears you down and whatever. But the first thing I did after I got a college degree was I went back and I worked concrete for a year (laughs) and I was like, my dad's right. I don't want to be doing this forever. So me and another guy in in Fargo, um, started a, uh, like social media business 
you know, we basically, it was just me and another guy trying like somehow convincing businesses to let us run their social media. Okay. Cause you went to college for marketing or what? I went to college. I got an exercise science degree. If you can believe really? that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, so I played college football. So like, that's what nice. you do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You either right. become a gym teacher or a personal trainer. If you're a college football <laughs> athlete, you know, Okay. or, yep. or you, you do well enough and you try and use your name to be an insurance agent. Right. <laughs> <laughs> or a realtor, you know? Like you, you look at all the, the local, that is true. Like sports stars, <laughs> yeah, they end up some, becoming an insurance agent, a realtor, or a car salesman. Those there are There is some truth in that. Yeah, because they just you use your name. That's but people funny. love them. People love yeah, them. Yeah, one hundred percent. But yeah. yeah, those are kind of the paths that you choose. Um, but I always liked marketing and, and stuff like that. And, and um, so we luckily convinced a few people to. I don't know. Let us run their social medias, and we were really bad to start. You know? <laughs> like, can't believe that they let us do that. That was probably the course of two or three years where at one point me between me and another guy, we had to edit like 30 videos. They weren't like long videos, but like minute to two minute videos in a month. Holy crap. And like, so I think that all those reps that we got kind of like laid the foundation for what you bet you ended up becoming of figuring out what does well on social media, how to edit a video. So work like that. And then, what was it like four months before I started? You betcha. I was like, I got this idea for a page. The thesis was that everything that's happening on TV is going to happen on the internet and like right. someone's going to do it, right? Like the action sports yep. television shows. You guys are now that. Like yeah. that's yeah. that's what you guys are the new age, the internet version of that. And I was like, well, someone's going to, it's just going to get niche down a little right. bit more. I'm like, someone's going to be like the Midwest page right the entertainment for people in the midwest so like let's just try it out um it kind of started more of like a lake page of like lake content right. boating stuff like that and then it just kind of morphed into more the the midwest on a broader scale and luckily we had a video blow up on facebook that kind of laid the foundation it was comparing a bush light to a spotted cow. I don't know if you've ever been to Wisconsin <laughs> yeah. and yeah. had a, yeah, they, they love cows. their spotted cow. Yeah. And I did not sacred to and, them. And I absolutely, uh, pissed them all off by saying that <laughs> the bush, bush light, light was better than the spotted cow. And so I've been, I'd have to agree, honestly. Yeah. It, well, and I've been repairing that relationship with Wisconsin <laughs> ever since, but, uh, it, it turns out if you can trigger a few people, that's a good way to get a video to go viral. It's true. You, you I was, was going right? to ask because you make all these stereotype videos. So, like, eventually one of these stereotypes has to get pissed off. Like, that's not how we are. You know, yeah, does we're, that pretty, happen? we're yeah. pretty strategic of, like, making sure that what we're saying is, like, You're has smart. credibility. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I, yeah, like making fun of people who have trigger grills, not, like, making fun of, you know, a, you know, like, a certain group a shitty of Coleman people. Yeah, or something. Or like something like that. <laughs> or like attacking Yeti because I have like seen massive, the Yeti yeah. beef. Yeah. The Yeti beef. The is, Yeti beef is the Yeti funny. Beef is real. So you don't you don't fuck with Yeti just to be clear. Well, what's actually very funny is well, no, I don't. <laughs> uh, what's very funny is I actually own a lot of Yeti products now <laughs> because we buy tough. them for the videos. But I'm like, it sucks because I'm like, I can't be seen in public right. with a Yeti. You know, so it's like I just have these like Yeti products just sitting there doing nothing. I should probably like give them away to like family or whatever. But you've got the three hundred dollar lawn chair sitting in the garage. I, I actually, I actually do um, still have that, and it's like I, I have become what I've hated. Yeah. It was like a weird moment where you're sitting there and you're like, you look around, you got the cooler, the the eighty dollar lunchbox, the fifty dollar bottle opener, all this stuff sitting there. And you're like. <laughs> Wait, am I a Yeti snob <laughs> on accident? But uh, yeah, and then that well, and that stemmed to make the the U Betty the right the, where I just took two inch insulation foam um, and duct taped it together, and I actually did like an ice test, and it actually like three days later had ice still in really because because that's what a Yeti is yeah. it's just insulation foam wrapped in plastic right so it was like. That was kind of a fun little project. <laughs> is the you Betty coming this spring? Uh, I've actually thought, me and Ryan actually have done this before, where 
we were like, we could, you know, uh, like wine and the canvas and wine things that gals go to, like where they, they drink right. wine and then they like all paint a picture together. Yeah. We were like, we should have a you betty making class where you drink <laughs> bush light and you make a you betty yeah. and all you need was be insulation foam duct tape and that's about it and uh but we never ended up doing it the logistics weren't as as good as what we wanted but do you guys do coolers do you sell coolers no we've talked about it but it's kind of a business nightmare of right. like you got to make it good well not even that it's where do you store a thousand coolers? Oh, true, it's true. You know, <laughs> it's like three cubic feet of <laughs> cooler right. times a thousand. That's you know, it's just a lot of space right. and, and all that to to do. But yeah, we've we've definitely thought about it. But so, uh, then it's also too, it's like making it so that it's a pr- priced appropriately. You can't right. be the can't be shitty, but it also can't be expensive. Yeah, it's a whole thing. Right, because if you come out here and you make all these. Uh, videos shit not <laughs> yeti and then you drop a product that isn't yeah. even comparable well yeah it's like you you want to put out a cooler that's similar to an igloo that costs 40 bucks but it's like the reason why it costs 40 bucks because they produce them on a huge right level yeah. so you like would be making razor thin <laughs> right margin it's a whole thing but yeah and so, there'd be you betty haters yeah be a nightmare then i'm fighting with keyboard warriors <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we we find it's best just not to even respond do you ever like go back and forth ever? Like if someone's totally in the wrong, do you just shut them up real quick or not? Yeah, I will be snarky at times. <laughs> Depends on the mood. You're right. Um, I think as I've gotten more busy, uh, it, I, well, yeah, I just have done less of that. There has been times where I've wrote out a full comment and then just like sat there for a second and <laughs> like, just deleted, deleted it. it. Yeah, like, I'm not doing this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, it's uh, because we try and do actual rational arguments on things that we tend to have less haters than people who are just trying to do right. outlandish things for clicks. Um, we, we put a lot of thought into what we're actually posting. Does it make sense or not? Um, so that kind of helps with not having as many negative comments, but well, and your viewers are like the nicest people in the country, <laughs> the Midwest. Yes. I'd imagine most. So is your audience mostly Midwest? Yeah. So it's all the Midwest States are up there and then it's like Texas, Florida, like rural Florida. Right. Um, and then the Northeast are kind of the areas of the country. Like upstate New York is very similar to the Midwest. Mm-hmm. Pennsylvania, I mean, it makes sense. It kind of just goes along that yep. chain. But, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, we kind of got the Midwest covered. It's kind of an – it was an underserved market of, like, no one was putting out content. Like, it was always – everyone's just shitting on the Midwest for being, right. you know, the middle of nowhere. And right. basically, do you guys have internet there? Do you still ride yeah. horses everywhere? Like <clears throat> yeah, those I, comments, you're like, okay, well, we're, you know, quality of life here is <laughs> infinitely better than you and your New York apartment that yeah, costs definitely. eight grand for 300 square feet. So what do you, who's the smarter one here? Right. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. I, I think people find us interesting too, because we're from the Midwest and, and, they can watch us do all these videos and things. And they're like, first off, I didn't even know that people lived in Minnesota. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but second yeah. off, how do you do all this stuff? Isn't there like skyscrapers everywhere? Yeah. So, no, I mean, yeah, yeah I it just works you're... for our content. You got to create your content around where you live. Well, what's funny is when I watch your guys' videos, I'm, I must be like now crossing the threshold to being like my dad. Because I watch your guys' videos, and the first thing that pops into my head is so dumb. <laughs> but it's like, God, the local law enforcement really got to hate these guys. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's, like, funny yeah, that it's yeah. like, yeah. I don't know. You guys are driving your go-karts on the main road, and I'm like, local law enforcement don't like these you know, guys very mm-hmm. much. I, I can't imagine bad, they love just, it, but... We, it brings we, buzz we never, to we never, uh We never really cause much trouble because it'll be, like, a Tuesday, and yeah. out here... No one, that no one's true. out on you the guys road are on in a, a spot Tuesday. That's kind of the weekend warriors and, type of, and yeah, and we we do a good job of, like we don't want to bother people, right? Like, yeah, like, yeah, like we're very meticulous. Like we would never, you know, cause trouble in front of someone out front of their house yeah. or whatever. Yeah, I suppose the law enforcement might not. Well, not <laughs> <be super. laughs> like whether they, you guys probably have a good relationship with them and have talked to them. them about yes, but it's like. That's why I went like total dad mode of like, yeah. well, you know, should you be driving that go kart on right. the road? I'm like, oh God, I'm turning into my dad. Like this is, I'm, I'm now lame. <laughs> I am lame that that's a thought that pops into my head. So you're coming up with these videos. 
I feel like every single one of your videos is extremely relatable to anyone who has grown up in the Midwest or even those places that you had just previously mentioned. What's your creative process of like coming up with this? Is it just you? Is it like, is Ryan sitting there with you? Like, how do you come up with the ideas and, and make yeah. it all happen? Well, it's a, what's actually funny is like, you know, you go to a family reunion. and you're <laughs> Probably like, your best spot to get content. You're, you're, like, you're, like, you're like building a video in your head yep. as you're at the family reunion. You know, like I think that that's kind of how a lot of stuff comes about is you're out with your friends at the bar. Got your ear to the ground. What kind of sucks, and you guys probably know this about content, is like you really never turn it off because you'll say something about like, that's mm -hmm. a great video idea. Hold on, let me write it it's down. Like my or, notes list is yeah, exactly. So far. Yeah, and I think that that just having your ear to the ground, paying attention to how people interact. I think I, my personality just kind of naturally points stuff that like that out. So I think that that helps. Um, and then obviously we have a team behind us that um, will bring ideas to the table, and we will um, brainstorm and do all of that. How but to make it better? Yeah. Our best ideas come from just like. Well, now what's kind of nice is our podcast feeds a lot of our like longer form video ideas because it'll mm -hmm. just be us talking about bullshit, and you know, like what everyone does. And then we put out a clip on that and that does really well. So I'm like, hey, we had our uh, how to drink patio beers video. Yeah, watch mm -hmm. that. Yeah, that stemmed from just a bit on the podcast talking about drinking patio beers. And so that's like also been a good way to almost like test market it. A right. Little bit, which is yeah. kind of weird. But you can kind of get an idea of how uh, everyone reacts to it or yeah. Whatever. It's like almost like a focus group without doing a focus <laughs> group type of thing, which has been fun. How many how many podcasts and like videos are you doing, let's say, just a month? Because you're putting out a lot of content. Yeah, so we have, at our company, we have 18 employees now. Um, probably Dang. five or six are just on the merchandise side of it um, and fulfilling orders and, and retail stuff. And then the rest is content creators. We have three full-time content creators. And then we have some part-time guys that are doing other stuff in the company that also, you know, our breakfast right. ball podcast, they are, you know, running other stuff, but then they do the podcast together. And so I would say the podcast we have, you know, you bet your radio, which is the main one that we're right. on. That's kind of the one we put our weight behind. Um, I also do a raging workaholics podcast where it's just me talking about business stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have a, Hot Dish Podcast, which is the gals in our office kind of have yep. their own podcast. Um, Breakfast Ball Podcast, so probably like four or five. Yeah. Dang. Um, but again, we have editors that, all these that do people. that yeah. and uh, create clips. And Oh, and then we're also launching a new podcast with Charlie Barons. Oh, nice. Um, called the Bellied Up Podcast that <laughs> uh, is, is actually a call-in show. Oh, so, really? So we, so good, we yeah. put out like, hey, call into this number and... <laughs> Um, like we did the Midwest advice and a, a, a gal called in from Germany and was and was like, hey, I'm born and raised in Germany. What what can I do to be more Midwestern? What? <laughs> is that a joke? No. And then Charlie Barron's told her that all she's got to do to be Midwestern is hit a deer with her car. <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh my god, you're you're telling people to get in traffic ass ac accidents. That's not good. But uh, that's so true, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's like the that's like the christening. Like now you yeah. are Midwestern by hitting a deer with oh, your car. God. So true. Um. But, uh, yeah, so we got that, and then they all, everyone kind of creates their own content on top of that. And When you bring these employees on, do you kind of have them, you know, almost make their own schedules or, or decide, like, what they're doing throughout the day? Or, or as, like, the boss, how do you keep them busy? We actually don't really have set hours. It's, like, more so you have set things you need to get done. You know, you, you got to put out a way. podcast every week. You got to put out X amount of videos every week. And then you just make that happen and how you do it and what time you do it and all that is kind of up to each individual creator. The figuring out how to not micromanage everyone is like now the stage that I'm at of yeah. letting go and letting people be creative and do all that. It's been tough. Um, but sometimes you just get to a point where when you're trying to like control everything, yeah. you get so exhausted it's from doing that. You're like finally just like, you know what? Screw it. I don't even care anymore. If it just does it, do it, it does it. it. Yeah. And then it ends up going better. So it's, yeah, it's, Definitely a learning curve on that side of it. So there isn't a like a schedule then. Like they're not like, hey, on Tuesdays we film you bet your radio. Well maybe you do have that. Yes, but. yeah. So we have like a schedule like that, but um everyone kind of sets their own 
schedule of when they're posting this video and not. They kind of do it week by week. We want to get to planning. I mean, you guys maybe feel this. Maybe maybe you guys do plan further ahead, but we've, like, never been able to plan really? more than, like, two weeks ahead just because, I don't know. Part of that is the company's taken on my personality, and I'm, like, a push everything off till last minute type of guy. <laughs> Sometimes your best work comes out in the last minute. Thank so. you. Yeah. See, Ryan? Because... <laughs> Ryan's the exact opposite. He wants to plan way ahead, and I'm like, you know what? W but I'm going to be so much smarter in two days, <laughs> yeah. right? Like, what if I think of a better idea in the next two days? Then, you know, then we're screwed. Yeah, there so, is something to be said about putting it down to the last minute, and then that's when you really do put in your best work. Like, when we're editing videos, we'll, we'll have a video filmed, like, a week in advance, and we, me and CJ don't even start editing it until the morning that we have to drop it at 7 that But it's night. a grind. And I mean, we it, show oh, up 6 a.m. Yeah, and we go until 7. Yeah. Maybe you get, like, lunch. But but when we just tell ourselves, like, we don't have a choice, we have to make it right. done, then it's like, eh, we're probably a little more, you yeah. know, yeah. this is going to be cut right here, and I'm not even going to think twice about it. Well, and it's, it's probably the right decision. And you, and you have this, like, ideal thing in your head, right, mm -hmm. of that someday – I'm going to have my shit together right? and it won't be like this. Yeah. And then another day, another week, another month, another year comes and it's the same shit over and over again. You need the pressure though. So like we tried, <laughs> we tried, uh, we tried editing yesterday to get a little bit ahead cause we knew we were going to run the podcast and we we're planning on dropping a video tonight. Yeah. So we, I, I mean, we got the most part of it done, but I was planning like, Oh, I'm just going to have it all done. I, I just couldn't. Yeah. I just couldn't. I was like, I got so much time. Like, once we get done with the podcast, I'll probably have, like, seven hours left. Like, this is just a little two-hour bit. Is that a Midwestern thing? I don't know. Ryan, how do you feel? He's like, I hate it. But I think it's a personality thing. Right. Personality. I thing. think it's like the if you're a creative person, like a lot of content creators are, they naturally are more yeah. procra procrastinators and all of that. And I think that's probably part of it. Yeah, I feel like if you have too much time, then you almost overthink it. Yeah. You have to have, like, there's a certain amount. It can't be, like, too little, though, because then you're just going to... Well, we actually have run into that with our videos where we will, like, have sunk an, a way too much time into something, and we're like, the just, internet's going to hate this. It's not it's, even yeah. funny. Well, like, we, yeah, we just put way too much thought and effort into mm -hmm. it, and that it actually made it worse because we overthought things and Sometimes all you just got to run it, man. Yeah. That's the beauty of the internet is it is very run and gun at times. For the most part, you could have the best video last week doesn't really matter next week because, you know, yeah. or this week because there's something new going on or whatever. Well, you know? like you I even think about like what if just less people were on the Internet when you posted it that day because it was nice out. Right. Everyone was no, there's outside. a lot of you know, things. Like, there's, there's, there's so many factors. factors that it's you just have to almost try and make good content and not get too bent out of shape if something you think is mm -hmm. going to do well doesn't. So and, do you break down analytics? Like do you kind of analyze and try to figure out yeah, we look at things like watch time and uh, um, like your thumbnail click through rate. Retention. Yeah, we're starting to get more into YouTube. It's one of those things too, though. Like, our uh, we kind of have a style that if we were to do the classic YouTube style, it doesn't like fit ours. So we're Tough. like trying to find a a thing that will the YouTube algorithm likes, but also like still fits our brand, and we're not just becoming the like right. you know over the top YouTuber because that's not our style and right. it, it works on YouTube, but we just are, we're in the middle of figuring that yeah. out. But yeah, I feel like your audience too has got to be, I mean, most of uh, like your uh, jokes and you know, the way the video is tailored, the people is tailored to, you got to be, I mean, I'd say at least, 20 like you got to be able to kind of have a little bit of life behind you yeah where you can understand like oh i do that yeah i you think know? where we relate to a younger audience is like oh yeah my dad is doing true that stuff. very true and i think that that's been kind of there but you're right like either i will have to figure out a way to appeal to a younger audience or we'll have to hire someone that does or You'd whatever be surprised though youtube is uh there's quite a bit of older mm -hmm. you know i mean it's the same thing with TikTok. Everyone's like, oh, yeah. just 14 year old kids are dancing on TikTok. And it's like mm -hmm. the amount of moms and right. whatever that are 40 years old that scroll just TikTok scroll all night. Three you know, hours a day. Yeah. It's, I think that the internet's maturing that way where it's like less like, I don't go on that platform because I'm this old. It's kind of everyone's mm -hmm. on everything now. It's really funny because, yeah, we'll be like, I'll go to the 
gas station and it'll be like a really little kid like i mean I, like i'm like i don't know if they should really be watching this type of <laughs> like like seven and now you're sounding and, like your dad right <laughs> and I'll, t- I'll say hi or whatever take a picture but then i go to the bar that night and it'll be like a 55 six year old man he's like man i used to be just like you when i was your age and yeah. you know so it's 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 such a yeah it's such a broad spectrum mm-hmm. which is good i'd like it that I, I feel like that's the best way to have it the thing with kids now is like they they're so glued to the ipad which is kind of funny We've talked about but, ipad kids but how funny yep. is it that like we're like god the, that That's ipad's gonna rot their brain and like our parents were like that n64 is gonna yep. rot your brain and then their parents said that the tv was gonna mm-hmm. you know and then their parents said the radio was gonna rot their brain <laughs> and like people used to literally sit in a living room next to the radio and just listen like this Can you imagine that? <laughs> i know i know <laughs> But I suppose now people do it. They just have headphones in. They listen to a podcast. But it's just funny because it just goes in cycles. It's It's the same thing over and over. We're all just on a loop, which is kind of sad. But (laughs) You you ever think about how back when you were a kid, uh, they were like, don't sit too close to the TV. Like, yeah, don't sit too close. Now Which, they got the fucking goggles. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny is like, and of course my personality, like, oh, don't put my face too close. I'm like this close. Yeah. <laughs> you can see each individual pixel. You know, yeah. it's like, yeah, yeah, and I'm really doing bad now, right? It's just, it's dumb. Or what's your opinion on the metaverse? <laughs> uh, metaverse. I think we're a ways out. I think it's gonna happen. Yeah. I mean, yeah. why would? Kids go and try and line up going to the mall and hanging out together when they could just go to the virtual mall sitting on their couch right. and talk to their friends and see them and high five them in the virtual world. So I think that that's eventually where we're going. I mean, COVID was a great example of the metaverse in a sense of we all figured out how to communicate without being in the same room. Zoom took off. Mm-hmm. Everyone is now okay. I mean, I. You know, we're building a building right now. I have not done one of those meetings in person. It's all been over, you know, Microsoft Teams or Zoom or whatever. And that's what the metaverse is, is just communication without having to be in the same room. And so I think that that's probably where it's going. It is why I am like have a little FOMO of like, like imagine if you, you were when they settled the United States and you just like could buy, land. You could buy land for like a hundred bucks. Yeah. You know, you could buy 10, 100,000 acres for like 50 grand. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like that's kind of what's happening on the metaverse. And I'm like, and I know it, that, but I still can't justify spending money in so the metaverse. <laughs> so it's like, I, but am I missing out on the gold rush? That <laughs> is like, you know, like I heard like Snoop Dogg bought like a lot in the yeah. metaverse. And you're like, God, I'd be sick to be next to Snoop Dogg. <laughs> it would be, and somebody paid like. A million dollars to be his neighbor. Yeah. Like no, I that. think I think one of the Nelk boys and Snoop Dogg, I might be wrong, but I think they are metaverse neighbors. neighbors. Yeah. yeah. Your grandkids are sitting there in like 200 years, 100 years, whatever, and they're like, oh, my grandpa, he invested a lot in the metaverse, yeah. so we got lots of land. Or they're exactly. listening to this podcast right now, and they're like, you motherfucker, <laughs> why did you buy more? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, yeah, shit, now this is going to be all right. <laughs> Now I can't do the, you know, well, I guess I just didn't know. <laughs> yeah. Nah, I'm going to go buy some after this. Yeah, I Ryan think part of the home. reason with the metaverse right now is people don't really know like where to go. I don't even know where to go to like get on the metaverse. How do you even buy in the metaverse? I don't know. I don't know. I think <laughs> that that's the hurdle that they have right now. Is it's very, uh, you got to know a guy almost, it feels like, you know, like. Like buying it like bootlegging? Yeah, I don't know. No, I think I there's no a idea. website. I think there mm-hmm. is. I And I don't know enough to like, don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure it's, you just got to know the website. It's pretty simple. You can like look and see what this person bought for it's just like anything <laughs> is this yeah. like one of those if websites there's anything though? for sale yeah but is it turns out it's not even really just yeah yeah, yeah. like dude on the i own, own 50 shit. acres up on the moon, <laughs> moon yeah. yeah oh yeah it's so hard now it used to be so easy you just have to cross the entire country and put up a couple stake posts yeah. you know i mean that's what's going on in the <laughs> metaverse good. and we're sitting here with our you know sitting on our hands not not taking advantage of the gold rush but Fuck, we yeah. gotta get some after shit, this. Shit, right. Right. yeah, this is bad. We're looking into that after this podcast. Yeah, Sea Boys, and you bet you own all of the Midwest in the metaverse. <laughs> yes. I bet you no one's buying yeah. the Midwest. Yeah, no one wants all the farmland yeah. in, that, in metaverse. We're like, this is gonna be worth something in four hundred years. What's gonna be kind of messed up is like 
people will just have jobs in the metaverse. Yeah. Of like, you will just be like begging groceries in the metaverse. You think? But it's cooler because it's here. You're virtual. You how know? does that? It's insane. God damn. Do you think you're I, there? Going to actually get have to like too. be moving though. Like, how does that work? If it yeah. if it is in the metaverse and they're working, They'll have are to, they going to just be using the their mind or like holding you, like the yeah. whatever those things are? I think you literally would you would just walk into in. the room and you'd see a guy standing there like looking like he's doing the you know grabbing the groceries dance that you know the dude imagine gonna be so unhealthy <laughs> just fat and sitting there just imagine it's like Wally but why would you be Wally why would you work hard to make money and do the American dream when you could just get home from your bag and groceries job. Put on the goggles, and in the metaverse, you have a Lamborghini and right. all that. You You're know? the man. Yeah. <laughs> like, why would you imagine though? You you get the metaverse. You- you're all excited, and you get stuck bagging fucking groceries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're like a CEO of a company, and you're like, God damn it, I did it again. Yeah. <laughs> History repeating itself again. <laughs> yeah. You get done, like, freaking stocking shelves at yeah. Hornbachers, and then you have to go to the metaverse and bag groceries. Yeah. You got screwed out of one of the business deals in the metaverse, and you got to go back to work in groceries. Damn it. That would suck. Yeah. Holy fuck. Um, All right, we kind of went down a <laughs> rabbit hole there. Yeah, that's um, how it goes. Bush Light is one of your sponsors, correct? Yes. So uh, at first, probably the first two and a half years, we were just kind of, I just love Bush Light, and that's kind of where it came from is just promoting it that way. And we do have an official partnership with them now, which has really? been fun. Dude, to that's so sick. Do, but, yeah. Why don't you bring a case here? Uh-huh. <laughs> Well, I didn't drive my car, and Ryan, <laughs> and what Ryan's car is the cleanest truck you've ever seen. So he doesn't have any stragglers in there either. So fortunately, I didn't bring a case. But I'm just so. Kidding. How does that work? Did you reach out to them, or did yeah. they hit you up? Because they, I'm sure you're plugging them left and right. And for the longest time, they were probably just taking the free publicity or what. Yeah. So it was like it kind of became. Well, I also like wanted people to know that I was doing this because I like drinking Bush Light, not because they're paying me. Right. So I was That's actually t- like, I had a conversation with them and I'm like, I think we should officially work together at some point, but let's just not do it yet. So I actually like told them mm, that I really? didn't want to do that right away because I wanted people to not be like, Oh, this guy's just doing it for the cash. You know, like I think that that's one thing that's really tough about social media is like, in order to pay the bills, you got to do brand deals and add revenue and all that other stuff. But at the same time, you want to keep some authenticity. Mm-hmm. And so that was kind of like, I'll do brand deals with other companies and other sectors, but let's try and keep the beer category as authentic for as long as possible. And eventually it made sense, you know, right. money wise and all that stuff. But, uh, and it opens up the doors. They, you know, you get to go to more events and stuff right. like that. Makes but, it uh, more official. We've done our work to make them feel comfortable, like that I'm not going to, they can put their money behind us because I, I've shown that I'm not going to do something stupid. I think that that's like those big corporations. It's tough. They, if they co-sign you and you do something stupid, then they're like, well, that's bad reflection on us. Bad PR. Yeah. 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 We know. No, I mean, we work with Polaris. Yep. So they're like our corporate sponsor. Yeah. I mean, and, um, Phenomenal company, but kind of the same thing where they're like, "All right, guys, yeah, let's if, maybe if cool we're gonna back little, you, yeah. like, yeah, don't be." And that's one don't thing. Make if us like, look bad. you're a content creator and you're listening to this, there's a time to be edgy and there's a time to be smart. Mm-hmm. Long term plays. Don't do things for the quick views of that you're gonna be edgy and say something dumb or do something dumb. Be strategic about it. If you're gonna take a risk on jumping a jet ski over <laughs> a road. Like, make sure it's calculated and that right. you're not going to, like, piss off any of your stuff, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Yep, exactly. Um, don't do that. And <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> oh, God, it's dusty in here. <laughs> you guys need to dust. Yeah, I know. We need to get Ken on the, on the Swiffer yeah. over there. So what does that look like, having a sponsor, a beer sponsorship? Do they just be like, all right, well, you'll get a pallet of Bush Light. It's and you got to put it in the fridge or do you, whenever you go to the store, you just get a show a card and like, hey, this one's on Bush. <laughs> yeah. Well, how does that work? It's not so much that, but we do get regular shipments of Bush Light to the office. It's yeah. like, you know, every month or every yeah, other that, month. That could be yeah. deadly if that's that would be deadly. Here. And it's like funny when we have a guest, uh, one of the gals that works for me, she's, she's my assistant. And I'm like, 
one of the roles that she has to do is the make sure that the beer fridges look pristine. Right. <laughs> That's which important. Is kind of, which is kind of funny. I'm like, labels out. <laughs> make sure when we get new beer, you rotate. You take the stuff from the back of the fridge, put it in the front, put the new beer in Otherwise the back. Otherwise it gets skunked. Yep. You know? Like, Assistant let's make it sure it. that there's no gaps in it. <laughs> like, it's, like, really funny that I'm, like, very particular about the beer fridge, um, where in reality it probably isn't that big of a deal, but it's, like, you know, take pride in my bush light fridge. So <laughs> The details yeah. matter. Yeah. They do. So our buddy Evan, who we actually just hired, loves twisted teas. I'm, I'm not sure if you can <laughs> like he, he. I'm not sure how much you can talk about it because they're yeah, I don't they're know. not owned by Bush. I don't right? know who. But anyway, the dude loves twisted teas. So like we we reached out to twisted teas and tried to get them to work with us because we surprised them with like a little dirt bike and we got like a twisted tea yeah. wrap on it and everything and and we got them like a onesie and we were like hey yo, can you guys like just work with us on this? And we'll be like, hey, sponsored by Twisted Tea. They helped us surprise Evan with this new bike, right? Right. Nothing. Yeah. They didn't even offer free shipping for the onesie that we bought. (laughs) Free shipping. (laughs) Yeah, that's all I I mean. So do you have any recommendations as to how we can get our foot more in the door? You can do two routes. One, you can almost just do it so they eventually have to. That was kind of our like deal is like we just did such a good job promoting their brand and making it part of culture that like they're kind of like well like it looks it bad looks, on their yeah part. like people are commenting like you should do you right. like you should do this and that so that's like one way like you just double down triple down mm-hmm. quadruple down on twisted tea okay or you just get a good agent that knows the right person because probably the problem is you just haven't got to the right person right. to talk yeah. to you know yeah. it's and that's like oftentimes those brands social media teams and stuff is like some intern right who's like the the nephew of the owner of the company or some shit you yeah. know <laughs> so it's like not necessarily like their fault either they don't really know what they're doing but i almost wonder like they're just they're watching from afar like why would we sponsor them we don't have to do anything and they're still promoting us. So, yeah. you know, there's like a line almost. It's one of those things where it, you got to be strategic. And that's like, actually, I think a good agent is comes into yeah. play there of like, they can negotiate like, Hey, well, they're going to start drinking this seltzer instead of twisted right. tea and stop promoting. We're going to promote your competitor and they can use that as leverage and stuff like that. So, so when you're out, out at a bar, you're kind of known as you love bush lights, whatever. I can't imagine how many people are coming up to you trying to get you to drink a bush with them. Yeah, or, well, and that's like, I mean, that's, I now know that when I go to the bar, that's what is like, and so I'm prepared that for that. It, but it's also like fun, like you go to a bar to like hang out and meet new people and do that. So that's like, I enjoy that part of it. What's actually funny is there's a bunch of dudes in the Midwest that just, I mean, you guys have a guy working here that looks like me yeah and so your stunt double ken yeah. he doesn't do much stunts but he will for you yeah. whatever you want well luckily i don't do much that needs stunting you know i it's well, usually could, like i'll throw my back out like lifting a cooler so maybe that's what we need you for you know but, yeah. gets yeah. a cooler jockey yeah. if you hired ken to organize your beer and lift your coolers he would be the happiest guy <laughs> <I promise>. done <laughs> Sorry, we're going to poach him over to you betcha, guys. Uh, but Imagine how funny that would be if we just never said anything and Ken just flips left. on it. Uh, but what's funny is those guys that look like me, they'll message me and be like, hey, man, thanks for the free beer last night. Someone, <laughs> someone thought it was you and they bought me a beer. And we're then, all doing and they, But like they couldn't like not give them the beer once they found out it wasn't. Yeah. Bad, so they're like, yeah, they just gave me a beer. If you're thick with two C's like me, you got a dark beard, you know, maybe try and take advantage, get a free beer out of the deal. <laughs> maybe play it up. Do a lot of people come up and, and try and get you drunk, though? When you first start doing events, you know, you get jazzed up and you start <laughs> right. shotgunning beers with fans and you yeah. start doing shots with fans. And next thing you know, you're time traveling at the bar <laughs> at when you're supposed to be working. Mm-hmm. Um, so I kind of instituted like a, I don't really do I don't shotgun or do shots at like events and stuff unless it's like the end of the event. Cause otherwise I'm just like, you get too drunk and then you make it fool yourself. And like, as weird as it sounds like it is still like my job and I don't want to like tarnish what we're building because I got drunk and did something (laughs) stupid. (laughs) Someone took a Snapchat and put it on TikTok, And yeah, like there's like a fine line of like, I obviously want to drink with people who are fans of you betcha. 
But also at the same time, I gotta like make sure I'm not being mm-hmm. a total idiot. Do people ever walk up to you and go, "Oh, you betcha"? Yeah. Do they do the like maybe yeah, not like in it, the best tone? It almost feels like they're clowning on you. Yeah, kinda. yeah, a little bit. But it's now it's more of like a "You betcha!" They like yeah. yell it across the right. room, or they'll just come up. Like I, I just will have, you know, thirty five year old dudes just walk by me and just look at me like, like creepily, and just be like, "Bush." <laughs> and they just like keep walking. They don't even stop to like say anything else. So that's always interesting. Yep, yeah. Push. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I haven't had too many negative fan interactions. Um That's good. Every once in a while I do get someone that brings me a spotted cow. Really? Oh. Like, like, what do you yeah, do? Throw it on the ground? Yeah. I just usually just like smash it on his head. This, or, like, <laughs> give it to someone else. And yeah. it's like you don't want to crush their, you know, like their gift. Hey, Oh, thanks for the gift, but also f you. I don't want it. But, <laughs> right, you know. So I feel when someone brings me a diet Mountain Dew, oh, they think man. it's the fun because I'm a Mountain Dew guy, and they'll bring me a diet Mountain Dew, and they think it's the funniest joke ever. I'm like, thank you, but I don't really want this. Can we can we unbox the Mountain Dew thing a little bit here? He what's loves a, Mountain Dew. So what's we, when did you start drinking Mountain Dew? Like as a kid, and you just never stopped. <laughs> as a toddler, yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Sippy cup. <laughs> Well, I don't know. It's good. It's a good pop. I mean, it, it objectively is a great <laughs> pop, but I'm just saying, like, I usually, usually it's like you go through a certain phase in your life where, like, Mountain Dew is really prevalent, and then you don't have that. You just have I've to, stuck with the phase. Stopped. You've been ride or die since the beginning. Mm-hmm. It's normally, like, eighth, Unless, ninth grade, you stop drinking Mountain Dew. <laughs> <laughs> Unless they don't serve Pepsi, then I have Coke. No Mellow Yellow. You like how that was, like, my way of saying, like, when are you going to grow up? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I like said it very politically. Though, I don't yeah. think he, good, I don't yeah. think you can, Ryan. Ryan drinks a, a Mountain Dew instead of a water. No, Mountain Dew is gr- like, I if I, if I haven't had a Mountain Dew in like a year and you you put, it's ice Crisp, cold, whatever. A good oh sober God. pop. So great. Um, but the question is, is they also have some good other flavors as well. Like the Mountain Dew original is obviously great, but what's your like favorite side flavor of it? There's there's Mountain Dew Code Red. Yep. There's the Live Wire. Mm-hmm. There was one that was like just a black pop. Yeah. Do you remember the blackout. grape? Yeah. yeah. Blackout. Blackout. Pitch, pitch Baja. Baja. It was Pitch Baja Baja Blast. Baja Blast. Baja Blast. Honestly, I'm a bit of an original guy. But if I, you had to pick the second, what's your secondary one? Probably Baja Blast. Yeah. Gotta go with Baja Blast. I, I think, think I'm a Code Red guy, mostly because that was like their first side like, yeah. flavor uh-huh. they did. And um, it was always like, yeah, Dad, let's go to the gas station. Let's get a cold red. Yeah, <laughs> felt like a badass drinking it. And you just hyped up on yeah. sugar for like an hour, and then you just crash <laughs> as a child. But yeah. it's my life, man. We're really unpacking Ryan here. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, what other what other stuff you got that? Uh, <laughs> what else you into? What, what's what your other, other stuff, problems? Yeah, what other stuff you got from your childhood that we can unpack? Uh, <laughs> oh man, I don't know. Hey, okay, all right. What's your opinion on seltzers? Uh, I think that it was very smart to try and have a competitor to beers. Like, you know, it's it's really not that much healthier than you, but they did a really good healthy beer. Think. But they just did a really good job marketing it like it was a healthy alcohol option. Do you drink um, them at all? No. You so don't. you're going to the fridge. You're getting ready to drink a nice, crisp, cold bush. This will never happen to you because obviously it won't. <laughs> but you open it and there's there's no bush. Yeah. All, you, all you got is a a happy dad <laughs> an, or a, a white claw, one of the two, and an IPA. Oof. <laughs> yeah. What are you drinking? <laughs> That's tough sledding. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Can you go to the store? You you, yeah, you legally know. binded probably can't. I'm answer that looking question. for the liquor cabinet after that. I'm just gonna <laughs> find a whiskey, you know. It's one of those things that like in a pinch I will drink whatever I like I always tell people like a pinch. There's, there's a lot of bars <laughs> really outside to. of the Midwest. Well, like this area, every bar's got bush light now, right? Mm-hmm. Whereas you go a little bit outside and then the, like a bar doesn't have bush light. I'm not gonna be the guy. Like, I always say, like, would you rather me be, like, the lame guy who's, like, sitting in the corner not drinking because, you know, they don't have yeah. a bush light, or am I going to try and find something else? And mm-hmm. so that's always the model, and I do what I can to get uh, the buzz going. But, yeah, it's a tough situation. I don't know if I can commit to a seltzer or an IPA. You just go thirsty. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just – I'll drink the – I'll drink the, like, 
mouthwash instead. <laughs> the buzz. The, the old, the old Get fashion your buzz from mouthwash. Yeah. Yeah. And your breath will smell good, too. Yeah, and you smell good, too. It's like uh, drinking peppermint schnapps, you know? Oof. Yeah. Double, double whammy. All right, I, I have another personal question. In your opinion, can you make jorts out of skinny jeans? Yeah. I mean, like skinny jeans, the, the part that sucks about skinny jeans is that it's so tight at the bottom, right? Mm-hmm. So if you just cut that part off, I think you're good to go. So it's True. okay to do. Yeah, I would say so. All right. Our, the, the, we have our own pair of jorts that we made um, that have our branding on them and stuff like that, and we're working on a second iteration. And the second iteration, I'm trying to taper a little bit more mm-hmm. so that, like, you know. so Fitted. Right. Yeah, I mean, they're not, like, skin tight or anything. Yeah, they look... They're, they definitely would look nice with the New Balance. I think I've seen them. Yeah, oh yeah. They're yeah. like perfect dad shorts. Exactly. Um, I'm actually a big, uh, I like the the seam on the bottom, you know. It, it's uh, a lot of people like the cut jeans look where it's like the frayed bottoms. Yeah. I like the, the nice Just seam. A nice, that, that's, I think, what makes them like, those are dad <laughs> shorts. Because <laughs> right. if yeah, they're like frayed, it's dad, like, yeah. you know, a little redneck. Maybe you're going to Wii Fest. Yeah, I don't know. it's a mm-hmm. uh, music festival. Right. Look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Depending on how cut short you cut them, I guess. Yeah. But, yeah. With the seam, you can wear it a little bit more. Less casual, more well, fancy. Well, you can wear it to church. You can wear it to, you probably can wear it to a funeral in some <laughs> cases, you know. But uh, depends if you got funeral. the, if you got the, fr- yeah, exactly. If you got the frayed bottoms, I don't know, not as. It's like this sad. guy's here yeah. to party. Yeah. yeah. The, is this yeah. guy here? Where is his cut off his cowboy hat? Is he at Wee Fest, you know? So. Another question. Can you wear your mowing shoes for a subject other than mowing? Yeah, so you kind of have to have a lineup, right? You kind of have to have your, like, cleaner, nicer pair that maybe doesn't touch the lawn at all. Reserved for the funerals and the birthday parties. And then you have a medium pair that you do some yard work in, but you also wear out and about of the town. And then you have your pair that was used to be the nice pair that just (laughs) eventually went down and is now the yard work shoes that's got the green, the permanent green. Yep stains on the outside of it and, and uh yeah. are, are they all the same it's the same shoe yeah, what the what is it new balance six seven you gotta nine look and or, see what you're wearing, uh, <laughs> wearing cowboy boots wearing cowboy boots today but the <laughs> new balance like six seven nine or something is <laughs> so you is. basically that's a good wait, model don't wait, get the yeah. six seven eight <laughs> yeah <laughs> i don't i don't know what it's six something yeah, yeah, yeah. What it is. so when you get a new pair then it starts at the top of the rotation well mm-hmm. here's yeah the thing is you don't ever throw a pair out though Okay. So, so then gonna, you basically just have a bunch of mowing pairs then? Yeah, yeah. Well, and you go, you do one of those things where you don't throw what you're never going to wear this, the the worst pair, right? <laughs> no. But you can't throw them away because what you, if you might need them? <laughs> what if there's an apocalypse <laughs> and you need that extra pair? You know, like that's borderline hoarder that's so stuff. True. <laughs> Mike's over here like, I never throw anything away. <laughs> Also, I f- feel like sometimes I grew up in the Great Depression because I'm, like, scared to throw anything away, especially, like, content-wise. Like, what if I threw away something that would be great in a video later, you know? Mm. And then So you just got hella yeah. hard drives? Well, yeah, but, like, it's more so, like, uh, like clothing items and stuff. Oh. Like, there's also, like, I have the original cutoff that I wore in the first dad video. Right. I'm like, I can't throw that Sentimental. out. Sentimental. Yeah. yeah. So then, then now I'm just like got build up and build up. My fiance is like, dude, we have to start throwing <laughs> stuff away, otherwise this is gonna be a mess. You know, we don't have, we ran out of room. Well, that's why you're but, building a bigger warehouse. Yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to trying to just fit more of my junk in there. But so your merchandise is extremely relatable. Yeah. For like the people that watch your content and the Midwesterners that want to buy it for either themselves or they want to buy it for a gift or something. You got funny sayings, right? Yep. Have you always has that always kind of been the model? It started when when we started creating merchandise. I was like, we don't have a big enough audience and people don't care enough for people to want to buy a shirt that says you betcha Betcha, yet. And so we started just making almost like beer gear, you know, (laughs) just Mm -hmm. sayings that were, you know, people were love. People were already buying Bush Light merch, but then they could buy one that says the nectar of the gods instead of Bush this time or, you know, the boys are buzzing or whatever was kind of the approach behind that. Um, so we do have, you know, you betcha stuff and we've kind of gone where the you betcha stuff is things like the jorts 
right. or a fishing shirt that's like not a graphic tee. It's kind of where we've gone a little bit with you betcha. Like functional, here. you're saying? Like it's yeah, like one or like, of those like, like breathing. If you thought about of- like a like you know, you take Carhartt, right? They're not making that many graphic tees. They're making a sweatshirt. They're making a vest. They're making whatever. Doing some stuff like that that's you bet you branded and then have the graphic tees be sayings that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you bet your fans will like, but also if you have no idea who you bet you is, you might still buy the shirt too. Yep. And that's kind of where we've gone with like our retail merchandise and being in Fleet Farm and stuff mm-hmm. like that. that that's that's the oh, way in, to do it. You're in Shields too, right? Yeah, we a uh, little bit of Shields, but but mainly it's High V and Fleet Farm. Dude, I'm so um, jealous of you guys. Oh, you betcha. You betcha. It just. It can live on forever. Like, it's yeah. so good, dude. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what we're trying it's to its do. It's its own Hopefully thing it in itself. Yeah. Hopefully it can. Do well, I'm sure. You are almost are kind of growing in to the character that yeah. you portray. Like, And sometimes I, you, you I portray actually, the dad, and, and you're getting closer well, to that. My fiance hates it. <laughs> like, I'll, I will get up off the couch and do it, some <sighs> groaning, and she's like, dude, you got to stop doing that. You're not doing the videos right now. Like, <laughs> you're too young for you to be turning into an old dude, man already. Yeah. Such a blessing, though, because most people, um, you know, you get famous for, for doing some sort, and, some sort of thing. You grow out of it. Well, and that's what you're like, growing into it. Yeah, is, I like that. <laughs> yeah, you good, are. Yeah, that is. That I'm, is true. I'm very I'm, envious. I'm using that actually. That's a great. Create something you can grow into. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I, I actually at the beginning battled a lot from going from being the bush light guy to trying not to be pigeonholed to just being the beer guy, mm-hmm. but maintaining that roots of being the bush light guy, but then also. Mm-hmm becoming the you bet you guy and having other reasons why people follow us instead of me mm-hmm. just doing beer reviews or yeti reviews and that's kind of where our skit videos and the dad character started and all mm-hmm. that so like obviously you got your midwest content that's relatable but then you're doing doing stuff like uh during the super bowl i saw you had the super bowl i don't i can't remember the title yeah, it was yeah. every super bowl party ever or something yeah yep. like that right the Isn't whole united states doesn't matter if you're in california or whatever that's well, applicable. And, and when we started doing the, the videos like that, it was like Midwest this, Midwest that. And then we kind of started realizing like, it's just, we don't even have to put Midwest <clears throat> in the title anymore. It's just Midwest because the way we talk mm-hmm. and what we do is Midwest now, you know? And, and I think that's kind of been the maturity of our page of like realizing that if we just say mm-hmm. like, you know, every Lake Day ever, we don't have to say Midwest Lake Day yeah. anymore because mm-hmm. it's right. like, well, everyone just knows that's what it is. So... Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's kind of something we've done too. Is like, like our, our thumbnail and title of our video is maybe revolving around some kind of action sports thing. But then once you like get into the video, there's like two or three other whole segments or bits in the video that are just, you know, it might just be humor. Like Ken spends too much time on the toilet. So we build him a reclining, you know, yeah, I toilet, was, I you know, like, one, yeah. like just things that you don't necessarily need to You still use that by the way. <laughs> I, I took I one can't dump in it. Why? Yeah, it was it was pretty gross. I'm not gonna lie. We got the chair at Goodwill. Oh, so you actually <laughs> did do it? Oh yeah, oh use it. God. Yeah, it was functional, <laughs> dude. It was kind of tough because like your my leg, like my kind of dangling a little bit. I'm kind of <laughs> short. It was gross though. Like I was worried if we would have kept it any longer. We a lot of our friends like to come over for just a party or whatever, yeah, yeah. hang out on the weekends. Yeah, that'd have been pissing bad. all over the side of it. That'd have been disgusting. I didn't want to dissemble it. I don't. I didn't take it down. Actually, whoever did it, good job. Yeah, Oof. it's hard to flip up the toilet seat. One, when it's one thing that I think that like you guys have done well is you obviously have your storylines of what you're going to do, but then I think all the side bits are what your audience comments yeah, on it's and what they the love reoccurring the bits. And yeah. so I think that that's smart. Like mm-hmm. it's like <laughs> drink, drinking Mountain Dew. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Just yeah. Keep that going, and then it's like. You know, I'm going through a cold red phase or a live wire phase. Could be a good switch up to the Mountain Dew look. People are Evil. maybe leave it as an Easter egg <laughs> so your audience is like, wait, was he drinking a cold red this time? Where's the regular Mountain Dew, you know? Yeah, yeah they yeah. would catch it. They would. Ideally, we get to this, the point in our YouTube career where we can just take a picture of Big Ken and go, new video today, and it pulls a million <laughs> yeah. views because yeah. people are like, well, 
I don't really I'm care. Gonna, if he's involved, really it's going to be something did. ridiculous or what? Just some, yeah. No, you know, it's just like, it doesn't really matter what the title or thumbnail is. Yeah. People are going to mm-hmm. just click on it because they know it's going to be funny, good yes. content. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And I think, you know, to applaud you guys, you've you've done a really good job on YouTube where it's like, if you, I like to look at the quality of views on the internet, right? You have like TikTok or like, is like the cheapest views you can possibly yeah. get, right? Like. Yep. You could literally just accidentally get a million views on there, mm-hmm. right? Then I think Instagram's harder because it's like not as like the feeds. It's a little bit of, tougher to get discovered. Yeah, I think Facebook's probably on the cheaper end because there's the share button that goes into everyone's feeds and all that stuff. Whereas Instagram, you don't share; you have to send it to one person at a time. Right. Yeah. Um, all this stuff, and then I think YouTube is probably the hardest because. YouTube people go there to just watch videos, not to interact with their friends and all that mm-hmm. other stuff. You guys are like competing for, you know, if you're thinking about Basically the, the television. Yeah. Like if you're thinking about Netflix, it's like everyone has a Netflix show and everyone's competing for the, you know, popular, like the top 10 and all that other right. stuff. Mm-hmm. It's just like more competition that way. Is, and, I, and I think it's, it's definitely harder to get views. So I, I applaud you guys for, figuring that out and and crushing it there because it's it's definitely tough and we're still trying to figure it out i will thank you thanks man we've been doing it for five years though you know yeah kind of and that's all we focused on was just youtube i think that that's just figuring that out uh like if especially if you have people listening that want to do what you guys do like that's maybe the biggest like lesson they can learn is like everyone was like oh well i don't have a thousand subs in a year like i suck it's like well, no, it's just because it's hard. Yeah. So you just got to keep going, you know, yeah. and I think that that's a lot of times um, you can get lucky and, and have something pop off or whatever, but a lot of times it's just like it may take five years to get yeah. to a million subs. Especially you know? after something pops off, you got to, you know, be keep ready them. to put the work in and then keep them there and then keep evolving, keep getting better. Like, Well, that's like uh, I always say, like, after the Spotted Cow Bush Light video, your first thought is like, this is sweet. We got a million views. Right. (laughs) And then like the next day I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, Oh shit. If I'm going to do this for a job, I got to figure out how to do this again. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. I don't even know how I did it the first time. (laughs) Also it's like, I better get to work and figure this out. And I think that that's like the tough part, right. Is like Mm -hmm. figuring out how did we do it in the first place? How do we get to the next one and all that? 100%. Yeah. That's what makes the greats really great. Is because they're able to recognize, you know, that they had something special, and then they put in the put in the work. And then, for you, which we're still trying to figure out, is how do you build the team around you? I think that that's where I, I you know, I, I did get lucky. Is that my brain does work a little bit more in like a business sense, and so I was like, it's one thing to get views, but it doesn't matter if we if you don't if we don't know how to monetize them. And that's where the merchandise thing came about, and that's where, you know finding a good agent that that can do brand deals and all the other stuff so that you can focus on creating the content. You have a team around you that handles all the stuff that helps make the money and stuff like that. And I think that is like the next step after like figuring out how to get views is then like, how do you monetize it? And I mean, you guys are doing a good job. Like you guys got this awesome facility and I got, yeah, I, I, uh, it's cool to see it online and then come and see it in person. Like, I think uh, you're saying that some guys are like, oh, it seems a little bit smaller than I thought. Yeah. I actually thought like it's this is like cool and like I don't know the shipping containers and like I you guys are like yeah oh, the ceiling's kind of low in here. I'm like that's <laughs> actually kind of sweet. <laughs> like I like that it's like feels like you guys have been grinding and kind of piecing it together and doing that. It's fun. Yeah, thanks, man. Appreciate that. Yeah, it's always cool to have another creator over here, and then we can kind of bounce ideas off of each other. Mm-hmm. Have you found that? Being from the Midwest or being from Fargo, there's like really not any kind of content creators or really people doing what you're doing. Do you think that you're limited on resources at all? I've had a lot of thought of like, you know, can you run a media company out of Fargo? Yeah. (laughs) One opportunity is I think it's kind of the Midwest in general is there is a lot of talented people out there. We just got to find them and put them on. I think it's maybe some growing pains in being the trailblazer of you create that in this area of the country, you know, it does suck. You got to fly everywhere if you're going to go mm-hmm. somewhere. But luckily Fargo's airport's big enough to where you can get in anywhere right. within, you know, eight hours yep. or whatever. And 
I truly believe that we can build something special in Fargo. I think it's a growing city. I think it's going to have more and more stuff happening there. And if we can be kind of a part of that too, helping it grow is, is, a, is a cool thing as well. Um, plus I got, you know, it's like the Midwest values too of like, I got fa- all my family and friends are in this area. So it's like, you know, to move to a different area of the country for our, my business seems like, okay, right. well, I w- wouldn't be as happy because, you know, you got your family and friends here too. So that's something to think about as well. And, you know, that's part of the reason too, we were talking about the stand up show at the beginning. That's also not great for your family life to be spending 10 weeks on the road doing a comedy tour either. Mm-hmm. So like, I'm also trying to make sure I make decisions that are good for the long term, yep. like me and my future family and all that. So I think that Fargo is a good spot. I think it's a great place to, I mean, even here in the lakes area, it's a great place to like raise a family and do all that. So the best I'd say. Yeah. High quality of life, low standard of living, which is nice. You can make the same amount of money on YouTube as a creator who's in exactly. California and you could have, you know, I think three about times that. the size yeah. building you could yeah. have mm-hmm. two times the amount of toys to mm-hmm. do stuff with. But just because you live in this part of the country and that's a big deal too, of like even Charlie lives in Milwaukee mm. in the, it's just more expensive to live there. So it's like we can do more stuff and all that. So that's like another added advantage. We just like you use everything in our area to our advantage. And we have that almost a one up on people because they don't have the opportunity to try to use that. But uh, like if you guys tried to buy like 40 acres in California, it would cost you an arm and a leg. Mm -hmm. You You wouldn't wouldn't be able to do it. Yeah, exactly. You wouldn't be able to afford it. Yeah. So it's like also another cool advantage there too. I think the hardest thing for us, and, you know, we're a little bit more out of the way than Fargo. Obviously not as convenient, but we just can't find, like, a really good editor or a couple editors. Yeah. And, like, you know, just we'd have to train them. But it's like we need to find the right person first. Go look at local news. Like mm-hmm. news news people? The editors who work at local news stations. You kind of robbed uh, <laughs> one of the local news stations of one of the guys, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, it's not my fault that they're paying them twenty grand a year. You know? Right, and they probably, it's probably all, a fuck ton of work sitting there all day. All, all we did was put out a job listing and they apply. It's like not us stealing anyone, but it's like, well, of course they're going to leave if you're going to make them work till 10 p.m. and pay them twenty grand a year. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. all we did was offer them a... a, a livable wage and they're like of course they're going to come work and at they're it. happy yeah. to come work here but, yeah. but the reason why people who work at local news are so good for internet content is they're so they're used to pumping out a con- lot of content in a short amount of time and good on like quick turnaround deadlines and all the other stuff and you could teach them the comedic timing at times or whatever right. and you can kind of teach them that stuff build the story but if they just have such a good work ethic because they're used to being run into the ground because <laughs> they're getting paid 20 grand a year and and working 12 hours a day, you know? So I, I think that that's like, I don't know. I would yeah. look there because it's like, right. that's the style. Evan, you just yeah, put out like a, that. you just put one out right in town, like a job listing? Yeah, or how'd you, just, how'd you do it? Indeed, and that's like, really? yeah. I, and I'm with you. Like, that was my concern when I started is like, is there going to be enough people that understand how to create content and all that? And it's, people are people, you know? Like, the people who live in... LA and New York and all that, they're not any different than the people here. Mm -hmm. Just people aren't, don't know that it's even a possible job, you know, Mm -hmm. like people don't know that they can be a content editor. Right. You know, like they're just like, Oh, well there's no no jobs for that around here. And so I think that, um, I think there's really, I think there is talent, a lot of talent in the Midwest just got to kind of be like polished up and found basically. Have you tried to delegate most of your like busy work? off on the people so you can just focus on you know what you do best yeah i'm getting there um it's definitely the i've had to learn how to like not micromanage and just say this is the end goal of where we want to get to like you can just go figure that out now and i think the merchandise is a good example where i told ryan i go if something is wrong with our merchandise side of the business it's not anyone's fault but yours so like giving them ownership there where it's like that sounds like a little bit like, No, oh, that's shit. true. That's mm-hmm. true. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But doing that with Ryan, I think, was like a big step for us. And, and it like, I don't ever have to think about that other than like the designs that we come up with mm-hmm. and the promotional stuff. But the operations of You you Betcha merch is all run by Ryan. And if some, if 
packages don't get to people on time and we have people complaining in the messages or whatever, first place I go is to Ryan and say, what's going on? Let's try and fix this. It's, right. you know, what went wrong. So I think that that's kind of where we're getting to. Yeah, good but, for you. That's the that's our next thing is just getting that. Yeah. And I think once we really get that, we're going to just dial in. I mean, when we really started taking off, everyone always thinks that, like, you quoted the jet ski jump. It really didn't blow us up on YouTube. It just made local news. So everyone locally <laughs> right. thinks, yeah. like, locally they still, like, oh, yeah, they, they jumped this jet ski and they got all these followers, you know, right from that. But it actually was just, like, an average video. But anyways, as soon as we started really planning. It was like, that was just like funny because it was like, I remember people being like debating like, you know, like, you know, should they have done that? Or like, was it an innocent thing? Like, you know, like. Mm-hmm. It was very innocent because the <laughs> farmer that owned the pond and the other, it was a dirt road. Yeah. He was there watching. He no, loved it. His whole well, family. I, I know. I, I'm i on your guys' side, <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. by the way. But it's just like funny because it's like. I remember people being like, did you see that? Like, what do you think of it that? It was great for, like, locally. It, it got us a lot of uh, notoriety. notoriety. But uh, I think it there is some misconception to it. Yeah, you know, no, I, I believe yeah. that, yeah. Um, <laughs> but, but, like, but you also have moments, right? Like, we blew, we had a good following before we did our husband's a Target video. Mm-hmm. But then, like, there was that was a moment that, brought us to another level or totally. brought more notoriety to this and that we're like there's a whole portion of our audience that yeah. really like don't even care about our bush like content all they care about is the stuff that's similar to i Husband's swear that's some of the like best that. stuff because it's just like us we start taking people from the snowmobile industry they they start what they click because of the snowmobile video and then they're like oh i kind of liked how they were joking around with each other yeah. and then they they come back and they watch a dirt biking video or maybe they come back and we're chopping the roof off a of limo. I don't know, but just I got goofing a, off. I got a funny story about last time I rode a dirt bike. Oh, yeah. So I don't ride dirt bikes, by the way. I don't. I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm much better on just solid ground. <laughs> uh, I'm scared of heights. Okay. I. Uh, I don't. Once I'm airborne, I panic. This you know? is when Ken's gonna come in. I'm yeah. not saying he's good at any of these things, but he'll do it. <laughs> I, I panic in the you air. Think he will? You, know, you think like, he'll do it? Maybe he loves them. Yeah, <laughs> dude, you're his favorite maybe, content maybe creator. For him, <laughs> yeah. He wouldn't do it for us, but maybe you. So but last time on. I rode a, I had a buddy who had like a little mini track, right? And it was, I don't know what size dirt bike it was. It was definitely wasn't the big hoss, right? But it wasn't like a pit bike, right? Okay. It was somewhere in the middle. And I'm just like, you know, going around, just riding whatever. And then I turn the corner, and there's like a double jump. Right there i'm like and i'm like you know what i'm you know i'm sick of living my life <laughs> being being a total like wuss like i gotta i gotta try it right you know and i you know i i don't pin it down but i start going pretty fast first jump goes well airborne land what they don't teach you when you don't know shit about uh, <laughs> motor sports and all that is how to land not having the throttle going. <laughs> oh. Because I panic in the air, right? So I'm not thinking about the throttle. <laughs> You're just right? whiskey throttled. So then you just land it and it just took off on me. And like I made it to the next jump and I just went flying. <laughs> <laughs> Your bike, body wasn't positioned yeah, right. <laughs> bike went flying. I went flying. And like. You do the thing. I mean, you guys, like, after you fall, you try and get up and act like, oh, that's cool, you know. But your whole, like, dignity is hurt. You're embarrassed. <laughs> your right leg is like, oh, yeah. So that was the last time I was on a dirt bike because I ate shit on a double jump and had no idea what I was doing. So now I just like watching it on the Internet instead of living it out Fair in enough. life. The go-karts are fun, though. I've, I got a buddy who's got some go-karts that those are fun to rip around on. It was always too like growing up. I loved watching extreme sports and stuff like that. But I just I, you know, I I got a pair of. I remember I got a pair of uh, uh, inline like aggressive. Why did I know you were gonna say roller? <laughs> <laughs> I almost <laughs> interrupted you, yeah. but I, like it's got the like I little. Knew you were gonna say yeah, yeah, so you can so you grind can grind bar, on yeah. the rails. And I had a Imagine. buddy buddy in the neighborhood who had his own grinding rail, and I got those babes suckers on. <laughs> And I rollerbladed over there, and I went for one time, and I ate shit so bad, <laughs> and I never did it again. So, yeah. I, I love the idea of doing that, but I never uh, – I, I can't – I just – more of a football player. Look, give, man, give me I a would, ball. I'm better with the ball. <laughs> I would and, stick to making jokes if you don't. Yeah, if you yeah, don't have to yeah. risk your life or risk uh, breaking a bone. Yeah, I would just make people laugh on the internet a different but, uh, way. Like, I mean, watching Nitro Circus shits fun. All that other stuff, the stuff you guys do. 
Um, what do you guys think of Nitro Circus? Do you know those guys yeah, at all? Have you you know, we or? actually just, the podcast that comes out tomorrow, we were just in Utah with Greg Godfrey. Yep. He's the founder of Nitro Circus yep. and he produced all of it. That's sweet. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's, a, he's actually a, a good buddy of ours and that's awesome. We're, we're buddies with his kids and yeah, he's a nice sweet. dude. Very nice. <laughs> sweet. He's yeah, got those, good stories. Those guys are actually talented though. You yeah. know, like they created a show off of doing extreme skill. stunts and skill. Yeah, like Travis Pastrana is like yeah. actually right. doing double backflips. <laughs> right. right, right, Not by accident because he flew off. <laughs> no, <laughs> no there, yeah. not just whiskey throttling yeah. it off of the jump. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, that was that was not good. That's the thing, though. We're not like super skill based. Like it's more of a lifestyle. Another right? misconception: they think we're so crazy or whatever, but realistically, we just ride just as good as everyone else that rides frequently. Yeah. Yep. You know. Yep. But it's yeah. relatable. Yeah. And I mean, we just make jokes. Camaraderie of yeah. it. But, like, I can't drink more than a lot of fans that I meet. <laughs> I'm right? sure. Like, they always challenge me, and I'm like, or, like, they challenge me to a shotgun. I'm not Steve gun. will and do I'm it. Like, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I, I objectively cannot shotgun that fast compared to some of these people. Like, I'm not, <laughs> yeah, I'm they, not like, like, race you. Yeah, beat well, you, they bitch. think because I talk yeah. about beer on the internet that I'm, like, right. going to shotgun the f- fast, the mm-hmm. beer bong the fastest or whatever, and it's like, I mean, if it's kind of the same thing, right? Of like, you know, I mean, I can drink a lot of beer and and do that, mm-hmm. but it's like, I don't know. I one of my buddies, his name's Andy Janovich. He's a he's a fullback for the Cleveland Browns. Yeah, I mean, that guy could sit down and put down a whole thirty rack. He's a big like boy. Night. Yeah, he's just like he. I can't drink more than him. You <laughs> it's know? almost got to be like inconvenient though. What <laughs> to drink? Have to drink that much? Yeah, to, uh, oh, more I would expensive. Feel like shit. You know? Yeah. You always got that one buddy who's a big lightweight, and you're like, yeah, but he does drink for cheap. Yeah. <laughs> he has two drinks, and he's done for the rest of the night. But, yeah. So have you ever thought about getting into pranks, like messing with people because you're so witty and quick? Yeah. yeah um, we've talked about it. It's more so uh, I would feel so bad. Inconveniencing them. Yeah. Yeah. The inconvenience. Plus, it's also a little bit like – not our style either, I don't think. Um, like, I would much rather do, like, uh, have someone on our podcast and then kind of mess with them, like, dry sarcastically that way as kind of, like, our form of a prank rather mm-hmm. than going up to a stranger and being, right. like, you know. Your <laughs> yeah. sole objective is just ruin their day. Yeah, I think that's tough. We don't like, go into ruin someone's day with a prank. No. To be but, clear, you said no, that. No, but it's anyway. just the yeah. idea mm-hmm. of it is funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and I think that. <laughs> I have the whole like Midwest nice brand and then it's, mm-hmm. you know, you're yeah. like, I feel like you could do it in a nice way. Now, I'm not saying you should. And I understand exactly what you're saying, but almost just like you Our, have this image where it'd be very be more unsuspecting. Of like an impractical jokers. Yeah. Type of you feel. could just be kind of goofy and there's like, what the heck's going yeah. on here type of thing. Like you're just being almost a little like, weird. We've talked about like how funny would it be to like, uh, or we were going to the Penn state, Iowa football game this last year. And we like we didn't end up doing it, but we're like, how funny would it be if I just did like man on the street style? Mm. And the prank was that I just tried to work Nittany into the conversation as much as I could. Nittany. So the the Penn State or the Nittany Lions. Okay. Like, what does Nittany even mean? I don't know. But this would be funny just to keep being like, oh yeah, Nittany, Nittany, man. So (laughs) doing that, like that would be maybe the prank style that I would go for is Mm. more so like they're just kind of confused at what's happening. Dude, you totally could because. Honestly, you have this image that like is pretty unsuspecting. Yeah, yeah, like just nonchalant. You're very like, like this guy isn't out here messing yeah. with me. Yeah, yeah, n- 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just like that. <laughs> the classic meow and super yeah. troopers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, same thing. Yeah, same vibe. That would be kind of our version of a prank yeah. if we were gonna do it. But yeah. well, dude, we would love to have you on if we do some kind of like prank and where have, it would maybe fit in. Yeah. Either have you. Working with us, or you being the guy that we prank, and then you know, it's pranking like the public, of, yeah, yeah, of, yeah. as if we're oh. like messing with you and getting their reaction or something like that. Yeah, you, we you, should figure something yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, we should definitely stay open to that. You might be too recognizable around Fargo, that's true. I'd imagine. Yeah. I don't, yeah, that's also one thing, too. Like shooting in public sometimes is yeah. tough, but. It's not, it wouldn't be too bad, I don't think. Is it tough for you to shoot in public? Like, do you kind of get like awkward if you're shooting like the patio beers and people yeah, are like watching so you? Everyone's sitting now, there in the bar like this. Yeah, so like, you like mess he's, up and, and he's they doing get one of those videos like, oh. again. Yeah, so I'm used to like doing videos with people watching now, mm. um, but it's mostly like, 
just trying to get it done in an efficient manner and like not having people interrupting and stuff like that. Not that they're being rude. It's like, they just want yeah, to chat, but right. then, yeah, try and get this done. But also like lifestyle content's kind of like tough too. Cause it's like, you know, I'm, if I'm trying to do something s- silly or whatever, it's like people are, wa- I don't know. If you it's, mess up, you can't do another take or whatever. We kind of do a little bit of both and, and mix it in once in a while. But one thing that I want to get into that, um, we're, looking to do is like you know diners drive-ins and dives with guy fieri Mm -hmm. just doing the same version but with small town bars so not necessarily reviewing them but just like highlighting the stuff that they have the cool stuff stuff, you know Mm -hmm. at the roadhouse you you highlight the bingo corner and (laughs) whatever and and talk about that and you make a joke about um my uh, my dad's construction company actually has a table there, like an <laughs> advertisement. Like you know, they have the advertisements course, yeah. underneath there, and it's like the only advertisement they've ever done in their whole <laughs> life. And it's probably because my dad's business partners like his buddies with the guy who owns it or whatever, right. and and he just like guilted them into we get Getting the table. The yeah. table. Yeah. So so wait, um, do you sit at your table? When you go uh, to the roadhouse, do you sit at the table or do you leave it open for people to no, come and see? That is actually a good point because every time I go there and it's open, I'll sit at it. But then I'm like, you're right. That doesn't make <laughs> any not sense doing because then it's not getting any more advertisements. Now that's smart. Mm-hmm. We got to get some of those you're, tables, you're, dude. Did your, your Mountain Dew finally trip? <laughs> the, the sugar rush came in. Thought that's good thinking. Yeah, good when the go Mountain now. Dew hits. Yeah. yeah. When the Mountain Dew hits. <laughs> <laughs> you, should, uh, you should do something with our big SEMA truck. Or have you seen our big no. truck? Oh, dude. I think you could do it, uh, some kind of fun <laughs> yeah. video with it. It's so, like lift it. Like you'd probably sprain your ankle. I actually did sprain my ankle jumping out of it once. But oh, yeah. Is that yeah, the big yes, red wheels? Yes. I don't know. You could do something funny with it. Yeah, you guys have problems with it because it's like kind of not It's just super street. illegal. <laughs> like yeah. street legal, I feel like right? if they pull you over and they're just going to be like, ah, he's a good guy. Yeah. <laughs> well... Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> well, if you ever need it. He's trying to make a point, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, you could do like a guy who lifts his truck video. Yeah, right? that's what I'm saying yeah, is you could yeah. use, if you need yeah. to use it, take it. Or if you ever want to hit another dirt bike jump, we're ready. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Maybe the next life I'll try it again. We are cracking up at the, uh, when you did with Charlie, he was in the kayak. Yep. And then you were on the jet ski oh, yeah. slamming energy drinks. Yeah, that was in this area, actually. That one was a completely improvised video. So when we get to me and him get together, our videographers like get stressed because <laughs> so many ideas. We, are even if we do have like some sort of outline for the video or whatever, we kind of tend to just throw it out the window when we start filming because it is like so easy to just do like the improv. Because when you're with someone who does improv, like and is good at it, it like makes it that much easier. Mm-hmm. And that one kind of, we were just like, well, the idea is just would be like, it's basically like a green energy, like yeah. health nut versus like a guy who's got the jacked up truck on a, right. in a jet ski or whatever. <laughs> it was like the mentality and like, let's just go do it. And then the premise was, but at the end they end up becoming friends and they ride the jet ski <laughs> together. And then we just filled in the b- blanks, like out on the water even. It was right. like. Yeah, so that was kind of interesting. We like That's when everybody says, "Oh yeah, you should work with that guy." I go, "Every scenario I see, it would be him making fun of us." <laughs> <Yeah>. Like <laughs> we're the guys being yeah. made oh, fun yeah. of. Yeah. Like was... you're you're fishing and we're like the douchebags in the wake boat going by, making waves, making it hard no, to fish. Like, like it could work. Yeah, I know what you're saying. I like doing that. Like I mm-hmm. like wake surfing. I actually own a stand up jet ski. It was I don't want to talk about mine. <laughs> you don't? I don't. Why? It's been too no, we gotta tell it now. I'll tell the, <laughs> I'll tell the short story of it. Uh, like you, like you, have, you enjoy it or you yeah, he, it? he loved it. Uh, I eight l- minutes. Yeah, I loved it. It was sick. I bought a stand up jet ski, and then we were like filming with it, and they were like, "Do a backflip," and I'm like, "Okay, I'll do a backflip." And then I kind of sunk it, not to the bottom, but it got water in the engine, and it hasn't ran other than the 30 minutes that I rode it, oh and then God. tried to backflip well, it. Well, it was a backflip it jet ski. It's like it? the one that's made yeah. for oh. backflipping. Like it's got yeah. a lever. You pull it, and it's supposed to do backflips. He surprises us with it. Well, is it so he <laughs> shows up. Fourteen grand he paid for this thing. But like, is it that? Because I know like jet skis, if you turn them over a wrong way, it can like ruin the engine or he something. Yeah, I don't really know. I, d- I did the wrong thing for sure. He, I didn't he do almost landed right the backflip though. I was, was very close. impressed. Mm-hmm. See, I would not be able to do that. I'd panic, and then I'd, it would just would be folded right. open, and I would just eat shit. I, I'm, the, I'm the same way, but I would know if I buy a 
stand-up jet ski that's supposed to do backflips, they're going to expect me to do a backflip on it. So I'm just not going to touch mm-hmm. this thing. I'm not, I'm standing that's smart. clear. That, pick your battles. Right. Mm-hmm. I'd say there. Yeah. Um, no, this, well, the stand-up too is like, people don't realize how hard it is to ride a stand-up Very. jet ski. They get on it and they think that, and then they end up, you can, you always see the defeat. Yep. They, just troll, <laughs> they troll back with yeah. their legs hanging off the back because yeah. they couldn't get it. Yep. You go into it with so much confidence. Yeah, you're like, oh, that looks easy out there. Yeah. And then you get on it and you're like, oh, shit, this is wobbly. <laughs> and like even turning sometimes is tough. And yeah. It's sketch but. going fast on it, too, because if you fall, you eat it. You're just yeah. like, <laughs> All right, so we got a plan. We're going to get you on a dirt bike. We're going to have you backflipping Ryan's jet ski. <laughs> All the stuff I'm just exhausted. Won't do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're not busy today, are it's you? It's like, guys, I'm used to just sitting in a lawn chair all day, you know, and you guys are like having me wake surfing and jumping shit. Yeah, we play out a video and we make you do all that. And we're like, okay, what are we going to do for years? Like, nothing, man. We're just going to sit down, and have a couple yeah. beers, and chat. Yeah, there you go. I think this has been good. Yeah, I it's been appreciate really good. you guys Thanks. having me. I, again, studio suite. I like the desk, I like the setup, and, uh, you know, when it's it's cool too to like see, you know, we obsess about stuff like the set and where the lighting and shit like that at ours. So like to see you guys also put thought into it too is cool. And um, you guys are crushing it. I appreciate everyone you guys having us on. And uh, yeah, I think we both uh, just keep keep going the way that we're going, and it's gonna be fun to see in a few yeah, years. Absolutely, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think this was our our perfect. Uh, merge our perfect collab was a podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just sitting, chatting, yeah. and hanging out. Now, yeah. when, now when people say, "Yeah, go listen to the podcast." Yeah, there mm-hmm. you go. Yeah. I like that. Well, if you're if you're out and about, well, you will be. You just got a cabin over here. Come come on over the summer and hang out. Yeah, so I think we should do a video, but let, we just have to think on what makes sense yeah. for. Mm-hmm. And even well, if we're, even if we're not doing a video, though, come yeah. on over and we can yeah. bullshit or whatever. But your Instagram is oh you betcha right. Yep, so. It, Plug all your stuff. I, I did a really good job. So you say, oh, you betcha, right? But there's an extra H in there, a silent H. So that was really smart by me, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't just say it. So it's O-H-H, you betcha, on all the platforms. Uh, we got our own podcast, You Betcha Radio. Um, yeah. So that's kind Go of. Check them out, guys. Honestly, if you just search You Betcha, hopefully it yeah, will come you, up. you'll get it. It will. Yeah. 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 All right. But, well, yeah. Lit. Thanks, guys. All right. Peace.